almost five years ago, um, we had the same kind of rally at the same venue today. And uh, I think most of them who came five years ago were here today. And it was great to see them all again in such large numbers. I think more than 1,200 came today. And uh, it's a good event. And uh, I think they all went home um, assured that Hindrap would continuously fight for their rights. Since this is the Merdeka month, how do you celebrate Merdeka? How do you see people celebrating Merdeka? Personally, I got nothing to celebrate. And I think uh, the people have nothing to celebrate. Merdeka is meaningless to us because we do not have equality. As an independent country, as independent people, uh, we should be free people. We should be free to do what we wish to. If our children perform well in the examinations, they should get a place in university. That is the duty of the country to provide for good brains. You know, if they are, if they perform well, they should be given an opportunity by the country. If a person qualifies as a lorry driver, for example, if he obtains his license, he should be given a permit to drive the lorry. That is the meaning of independence. So the people must be free to choose and do what they want to under the law. However, this country has institutionalized racism for the last 55, for the last 55 years, and uh, this country is run on a racial basis. All policies, implementation, and the country's wealth is channeled to enrich a particular race and a particular elite community. It should stop. This country belongs to all. We are not pandatangs to this country. We are citizens of this country. We are fourth, fifth generation of uh, citizens of this country. We have got no other country. But we are continuously made to feel that we are aliens in our own country. So there's nothing to celebrate. There must be equality in rights and dignity. Article 8 is flawed because Article 8 provides for equality under the law. Having seen the uh, um, declassified documents in London, I can tell you that there was a conspiracy by Tunku Abraman and the British High Commissioner in Malaya then, in 19, uh, early 1957, to change the provisions drafted by the Reed Commission. The original provision recommended by Reed Commission for, provided for equality in rights and dignity. But what we have today is equality under the law. So Article 8 was manipulated to um, accommodate a racial segregation policy or a racially uh, entrenched uh, provision in the Constitution, which is Article 153. So, as unequal citizens, I don't think I'm a happy Malaysian. I don't think the Indian community and the Chinese and the Kadazans and the Ivans, they have been recolonialized. We all have been recolonialized after British left the country. So we are permanently colonialized community. It goes to all. So when talk about equality, uh, equality among Malaysians, what is your, the Prime Minister just brought the term called One Malaysia and don't you think so that he is trying to emphasize equality in that One Malaysia concept? Equality in words. He talks about One Malaysia but he doesn't define what One Malaysia is. One Malaysia has to be defined properly in the correct perspective. It, it has become a joke. I was, you know, after a five, almost five year return, I saw One Malaysia Clinic, One Malaysia Kerpo. What is it? It's a joke. Through One Malaysia should mean that the country treats its citizens with respect. That is more important, you know, rather than opening up a One Malaysia clinic, One Malaysia project, this and that, Karpo and all, it's, it's a joke, you know. And I think um, the country's leadership should not treat its citizens as fools. We cannot be fooled any longer. I think the people are aware of their rights. Uh, Hindraf has been going around educating the people on human rights, on our basic rights, 
and the rights uh, in equality, in education, economic rights. We have all the rights to enjoy the fruits of the country. By just merely singing the slogan of One Malaysia uh, is not going to make us all feel one. We are not one Malaysian community. As simple as that. Uh, Hindrav is considered as a ban organization in this country. Are you trying to apply to break that and to make it a legal entity or something? We have applied. There are almost 30,000 NGOs in this country. But it looks like the government fears us. Uh, they fear because we speak the truth, we fight for justice, and, and, and we do not fear their repressive laws, and therefore they are fearful of us. Uh, we are recognized internationally. Indra uh, has been given space to make presentations in the United Nations, U.S. Senate, Congress, U.K. Parliament, European Parliament, everywhere else. But in Malaysia, you know, we remain a banned organization. But despite that, uh, we will continue. Uh, and we will continue to speak the truth. And uh, we will face whatever consequences, uh, you know, that the government... Uh, we will face whatever consequences and we are willing to take on the government head on on issues of human rights. Now since the time you came back uh, from 1st August, it seems that the Indra uh, movement is growing and the support is coming back. Uh, will the history that has been created in November 25, 2007 be repeated? Magic can happen. Well, of course, the uh, government through the... Uh, uh, propaganda machine, the special branch, and their agents are creating rumors that I've been brought over. That's why I had a smooth um, um, uh, passage through Johor Bahru. They can say whatever they want, uh, but I think things are brewing on the ground. Today you saw more than 1,000 people came, and you saw their reactions, their expressions. Uh, and I've gone throughout the country uh, and thus far I think I've met about close to 30,000 people and I think uh, the message will spread all over because each one of them are bound to speak to others and spread the message of Indra. This is what this was what we did in 2007 and with the rate that is going down, and I think I'll be able to reach more people. Uh, and uh, anything could happen. We are planning uh, a rally, a massive interrupt rally on uh, 25th of November, and we launched the the uh, interrupt rally uh, earlier today. And I think the feedback has been very positive, and we believe that large numbers of interrupt supporters will turn up and join us uh, in our rally on the 25th of November.